I'm good now, right? Audio good? Because the devil is a lie, hey. I'm telling you the truth, hey. It's all in what you do, hey. Some things you gotta do, hey, 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 hey. Love is the word is on first. What up, Big Lloyd? DB, what's up? Hey, what's up, Mo Sauce, Mr. Melly Vice, JP? But well, we gonna call him JQ tonight, man. What's up, Sir Rock King? Appreciate you. I know I started the show early, KJ, but it's all right. It's okay. What's up, Rob G? TBA, what's up? TBA or TBC? Which one we gonna go with, DB? Help me out. Pick me up, big homie. TBA or TBC? What's up, E1K? Well, TBC is, you know, Kyle, so maybe we'll go with TBA. What's up, Boxing Social Network? Appreciate you, man. We in here. We in here tonight. Come on and power on in, man. We just going to sit back and, uh, you know, go get your favorite drink. I mean, whatever you going to do tonight, because we about to get a lesson tonight, man, and I can't wait, man. It is an absolute honor to have the doctors in the building. See, I'm in Cali. When, uh, when people say the doc is in the building, they think we talking about Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? But we not. <laughs> we not. We got, how you feeling, brother? How you feeling, doc? Dr. Hey. How you feeling? Appreciate oh, brother. you. Oh, Brother Hawthorne, I appreciate you. Thank you for this opportunity. And to all who have tuned in, I'm looking forward to this. Been looking forward to it. Oh, man, you better cut it out talking about this. Man, thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you. And thank you to the ancestors for putting the spirit in you, man. No thank doubt. Oh, so no, much, man. No and, doubt. And I, and I just want to also give a shout out uh, to Queen Patty Bean. Okay. <laughs> for all sisters did to make this happen. She's been the uh, person, the, the go-to person for all this to happen, Brother Hawthorne. So I'm pleased and honored to be here, brother. Hey, you got to stop giving her compliments because she's going to ask for a raise. So come on. <laughs> we, 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 on we working with each other right now. <laughs> 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 but uh oh but she told before we jump into this th this great we're gonna call it a lecture conversation whatever you want to call it she said that you had a Malcolm X story and Malcolm X is my heroes of oh, heroes. Oh, oh 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 yeah well you know this is th this is a story I tell brother this is my only experience uh yeah. this go back 1961 I was seven years old brother uh-huh my mother used to get her hair done in a place called Loris's in Harlem, 121st. Mm -hmm. And um, Adam Clayton Powell, which at that time was the mighty 7th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And um, every other Saturday, my mother would go to get her hair done. And of course, she'd bring me with her. And um, there was an elder brother had a um, uh, like a luncheonette a couple doors down. And I used to always get my lunch. That You know, that was one of my highlights to get to lunch with the elder brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, one day I came out and I saw a crowd that was gathered at the corner, which would have been for us, 120th Street gotcha. and 7th Avenue. Very popular. I know exactly uh, where you're at. I know exactly. Okay. Where you're at. <laughs> All right. 120th and 7th. There was a crowd. And that's I Linux sure. Avenue now, right? Now it's Malcolm X Boulevard, correct? Uh, uh, now it's Adam Clayton Powell. Adam Clayton Powell. Thank you. Malcolm thank you. X used to be Lennox Avenue. Lennox Avenue. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 7th Avenue now is Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. I know exactly where you're at. Yeah, man. And um, so I went back. I asked my mother if it was all right for me to go and check it out. Something was gone. She said, yeah. She said all the things mothers say, be careful, all the rest of that. So I went, I worked my way through the crowd and I'm sitting up there and um, I, I I get up in there and I'm right in front of this tall. I, I mean, he's a giant because you got to understand I'm seven years old, man. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I'm looking at this tall man and I'm just looking up in his face, man. And like, I can't, I never saw nobody like this before. Um, I never saw someone whose skin complexion and uh, hair color was the same. And I'm looking up at it and I'm trying to figure out where his forehead ends and his hair begins. Wow. I'm just staring at him, staring at him. I can't get, and long story short, okay, I'm there maybe, I don't remember, maybe 15 minutes breaks up this gentleman goes in his direction and the crowd goes in their direction so i go back to the beauty parlor and i'm sitting mrs jefferson was my mother's hairdresser and she had her stall in the front so i could look out on the street of harlem and um 
I was sitting there and there was a, you know, there was a brother that used to work in the shop. He used to do different things for the, uh, you know, for the sisters because it was owned by sisters and brother, a lot of time come in, does his work, you know, whatever, electrician, plumbing, whatever. And this brother come busting in the, in, 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 in the uh, hair salon and said, you won't believe who was just on the corner talking to us. And Miss Jefferson said, well, 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 who was it? And then the other beauticians got interested too. Well, who was it? He said, well, you, you're not going to believe who was it? And he was talking, he was talking his talk. And uh, they, they said, well, who was it? He said, it was Malcolm X. Now, in this story, I'm telling you, brother, this is the first time I know who it is that I was looking at. And this is the only way I can tell you this story. And so I'm, 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 I'm there listening, and they all get up. Malcolm was not there on the corner talking to you. He said, yeah, he was talking. Get out of here. He wasn't talking. He said, yeah, ask that young brother right there. That brother can tell you everything Malcolm said because he was looking right up in his face the whole time. I always tell this story for two reasons. One reason is that this is my only experience with Malcolm X. And I'd love, I'd love to lie and say he put his hand on my shoulder and <laughs> said, hey, young brother. None of that happened. But the important thing to understand is when they asked me, well, what did Malcolm say? First of all, I didn't even know it was Malcolm X. The second thing is, Brother Hawthorne, I didn't hear a word he said because I was too busy trying to figure out where his forehead ended and his hair began. <laughs> well, you did just leave the hair salon. So. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is this. I tell this story. The other reason why I tell this story is because I've spent my life with children. Board of Education, New York, teacher, 31 years, mm -hmm. taught college for 14 years. You never know what's on a child's mind. Because here I am looking up in his face. This brother thinks that I'm absorbing everything Malcolm's saying. Uh -huh. I don't know what Malcolm said. All I know is I'm trying to figure out where his forehead ended and his hair began. And I've always thought about that when I was in the classroom with children. Because they may be all attentive up in your face, but they may be looking at something totally different. Right. You think they're all engrossed in what you're saying, and they're trying to figure out what's wrong. Something's wrong with your face, your, your eyebrow. You got something up in your face. Right. You never know. So that's the two reasons why I always tell that story. That is my one and only experience with El Haj Malik El Shabazz. But here's another key that yeah. brings this story full circle. I was in the second grade when this happened. Seven years old. Spring. 1961, there was a, a, a night in February, 1965, that I was doing my work, getting ready for school. I was finishing up a report on the Soviet Union because I remembered my father belonged to the Mother AMZ um, Zion Church, whose pastor was Benjamin Robeson, who was Paul Robeson's brother. Uh, Benjamin Robeson married my parents in 1945, so I was very exposed to Paul Robeson, and I remember his conversations about the Soviet Union. I'm in the sixth grade now, and I remember um, I said, "I'm a, in honor of Paul Robeson, I'm going to do this report on the Soviet Union. But I'm sitting there finishing up my report, and over the television news, it comes that the teacher of hate died from hate. This was February 21st, 1965. Well, here's one of the things that's important. Even though a child, I could never tell you what he said. There was one thing that I did feel. Because children are receptors. They're like antennas. They can pick up vibrations. The one thing I remembered more than anything else, Brother Hawthorne, was the absolute unconditional love that Malcolm had for the people he was talking to in my presence. Because remember, I'm in the middle. I'm between Malcolm and... And the people who have formed like a semicircle. And I'm right up in front looking at it, right, right up in his face. And the responses that I received back came through me too. That love that the audience had for Malcolm, that trust that only a seven-year-old may not know but could feel. And I remember then that they weren't telling the truth in the news. I knew that. Because he was not a teacher of hate. Because I only felt love when I was in his presence. And that's the one memory I have. It was the feeling that he had for the people he was talking to on the corner of 120th and 7th. And the feelings that the people had towards him 
on 120th and 7th Avenue. And I've always realized that. And that's why when I've worked with children or even in our community, there has to be some form of a safe haven created between people. Because when people feel safe, they can do a lot. You can teach a child anything if that child feels safe. You can bring an adult to a level of consciousness if they feel safe in your presence. If they think it's a scheme or if they think it's a hustle, they may pay attention, but you're not going to get their heart. Malcolm had the people's heart. And that's my experience with Malcolm in his presence and on the day he joined the ancestors. I testify that he loved his people and the people loved him. And I'm telling you as a seven-year-old, that's my story. <laughs> Beautiful story. To put a bow on this, what do you think happened February 21st? I, when, you I, say that, when you say that, what do you mean? Like, um, how do you think his demise happened? Well, it was a number of entities involved. Yeah. It was uh, security forces. Right now, the FBI and the, and the New York City Police Department are being brought up on charges. They're opening up a case. Malcolm's daughters and family are bringing up a case against him. Okay. Uh, the New York City Police Department, because they arrested Malcolm's security days before that event, knowing that if they put them away, Malcolm would not have security. But there's nothing that is being said today, Brother Hawthorne, that Zach Kondo didn't write in his book, The Assassination of Malcolm X. Yeah. Ain't nothing new. We knew this. There were elements within the Nation of Islam that had infiltrated it. And there was a very uh, serious fear of Malcolm because those who would wish to take advantage of the Nation of Islam, because through the years, brother, I've had a chance to, well, Earl Grant was a friend of mine. Earl Grant is the brother in the movie that's Malcolm's best friend. At the end of the movie where he, where he hugs him in Spike Lee's piece and, and he hugs him, that's Earl Grant in real life. Earl Grant and I were friends as 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 years went on. And, and Earl Grant told me stories.